Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. In 1908, Piper introduced this gun, the Piper Bayard 7.65 millimeter pistol. This is a five shot magazine, 32 ACP pistol. And for the next 66 years, it was the smallest 32 ACP semi-auto that had been made. Then around 1984, Ludwig Wilhelm Seekamp brought out this, the Seekamp LWS 32. As you can see, it's quite a lot smaller. It's a straight blowback with a six round magazine and a double action only trigger mechanism. And the double action is quite smooth, breaks at eight pounds, and a very interesting little gun. Originally, these came out in 1981, I believe, in 25 ACP. And, um, you know, there was a need for a quality pocket backup pistol. And he thought that filled the need. And it was kind of a natural for him because uh, Ludwig uh, had, aside from being a designer for Mossberg, um, had developed a reputation as a gunsmith doing double action conversions for 1911s and did a number of uh, improvements to small pistol design and then came out with the LWS 25 in 1981. So it was produced until 1985 or so. It was uh, largely supplanted partly because the LWS 32 was the same size and weight and 32 was becoming somewhat more available than 25 ACP even then. It's also more powerful. How much more powerful? 25 ACP from a two inch barrel fires it firing a 50 grain bullet makes about 800 feet per second and uh, 71 foot pounds of energy. In 32 ACP from the two inch barrel with a 60 grain bullet, 10 grains more, um, makes about 800 feet per second. <laughs> and that's good for a total of 85 foot-pounds of energy. The difference between 71 and 85 may not seem like much, but when you're at such low numbers, it's a significant upgrade. Uh, the pistol has a number of interesting features and some frankly fairly odd ones. Um, so let's take it to the tabletop and have a look at it. Okay, first things first, we unload and show clear. And this is actually loaded so that I can show you that because it's not like other guns. Other guns, you would drop the magazine and rack the slide. Well, in the C Camp, you can't. What C Camp says is to pop the magazine loose so that it comes out just a little and then rack the slide to dump the empty. And that seems to work. And the reason you need to do that is because not only does the trigger safety disable the trigger, you can't even pull the slide back more than far enough to check the chamber. And this is a safety feature. Um, they want this gun to be safe whenever it's not in use. And to do that, they have the magazine disconnect safety that keeps the slide from being opened the theory is, pardon me, the theory is that whenever you leave the gun, pull the magazine, and the gun is completely safe. The trigger cannot be pulled, the cartridge cannot be ejected from the chamber, and thus possibly form a choking hazard for children or risk other shenanigans. And so, that's it. It's not a flaw, it's a feature. A safety. Now, with the magazine inserted, you can pull the trigger, and it, eight pound trigger, nice and smooth. Long reset, but then it's just like a double action revolver by design. There are, as you can see, not even the tiniest vestige of sights. This doesn't mean you can't aim. You can point this thing pretty effectively by lining up the slide, and the trigger pull is good enough that it's pretty easy to keep it on target. Now, the way you disassemble this gun is we don't on this video. 
because I tried yesterday, and while I was eventually able to do it, it might be comedy gold, but I don't, you know, I don't really want you guys watching me struggle with it for five minutes. In theory, it's simple. You pull the slide back, insert a cartridge to block it in position, and then, using a 332 inch punch, you go into this little hole here, push in the retention plunger, and then lift the slide off the gun. And it does work eventually. But, it's a big pain in the ass. Disassembly is very easy. Uh, I will make some notes on the interior. One of them is don't pull the trigger if the slide is off because the trigger will detach from the action bar and it will be annoying to put back in place. It's not hard, it's just annoying. Now, there is a recoil spring underneath here which does not have a guide rod and it doesn't really need one because there's nowhere for it to go. It is a double recoil spring However, with a larger spring permanently attached to a smaller interior spring to manage the recoil. And it needs some managing, so that works out pretty well. Anyway, the gun is, as you can see, is quite well made. This is a modern example, apparently made last year from what I can tell. And it has the new style or possibly aftermarket grips from C Camp which provide really good texture. It's very easy to hang on to the gun, despite having a one-finger grip. There is a magazine with a base pad available, and you can, I can force both of my fingers onto it using that. But it doesn't work, so I thought I wouldn't show it in this video. Anyway, beautifully made little gun. Very reliable in practice. Although ammunition is very specific because when you're making a gun this small you're going to have to make compromises one of the compromises is no external safety hold open disassembly lever or any of that another one is ammunition the gun was originally made in 25 acp and the magazine is the right length for 25 acp you can actually insert that which is a hair shorter than factory 32 ACP. So factory 32 ACP ball will not fit in the magazine. In 1984 or so, they uh, specified Winchester silver tips, not because they were hollow points, because they won't expand from this barrel anyway, but because they fit in the magazine. Now, if you shoot anything that is not on their list of recommended cartridges, um, it voids the warranty. This gun's warranty is already voided because the original owner called them up and confessed to shooting something that was not on the list. So they voided his warranty. So what I have are reloads that are loaded just a hair short and downloaded slightly to compensate that fit in the magazine. Anyway, great little gun, really like them, very easy to keep in your pocket, 11 and a half ounces, I mean, it's really not bad to carry in a pants pocket, and of course, you should always use a pocket holster, of which there are several available for these guns, they've been around since the mid-80s. Anyway, the Seacamp LWS-32, odd, quirky, tiny, but good. Seacamp set out to make a basic, no frills, very easy to use, very safe pocket pistol for backup or extreme discreet carry, and they succeeded. The fact that they are in production still, or perhaps again, I'm not sure, in both 32 and 380 is a testament to that. And while mouse guns on the whole have waned in popularity since the dawn of the 21st century. Um, they keep making them, and apparently people keep buying them. Now, these are available in 32 or 380, as stated, for 500 to $600, pretty typically. 
there is a coated black version, and there is even a California compliant version, which has a small push-up safety located right here, which of course defeats the purpose of the pistol. California, what can you say? Anyway, for ultimate discretion in non-permissive environments, as a backup, as a just live in your pocket every day, never forget it gun, hard to do better. And if you accept the mission, you accept the gun. Please click like and subscribe. It helps YouTube realize that I'm out here. If you want to support me in a more material fashion, I would strongly encourage you to support me on Patreon. The link is in the description below. All of this costs money, ammo, guns, everything. And uh, your help is deeply appreciated. Anyway, I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.